Hi everyone, today we're going to talk about plant adaptions. Whenever you have a challenging goal, you have to have a strategy. When plants want to succeed in a harsh environment, they have to have a strategy, a life strategy, and many different adaptions to be able to successfully grow in that harsh environment. We're going to learn about those strategies that plants have and the adaptions that plants have to grow well in environments that are very challenging to survive. We'll also learn about the different types of plants and how they thrive in diverse environments. A strategy is simply a plan of action designed to achieve a major or overall goal or aim. A goal of most plants is to thrive and to reproduce. Certain plants have extreme strategies to reproduce such as those plants that produce millions of seeds every season. Their goal may be to take over the earth, and they may or not be successful with that. Other plants do their absolute best to thrive in a harsh environment. For example, look at this tree growing on the side of this wall. It's obviously not the ideal place to grow roots, but it is thriving in this challenging environment. In order to help you better understand strategies and how they help you and plants attain goals, we're going to learn about a strategizing technique called SWOT. Strategies are determined by your competitive advantage and adaptions. So if you're really good at something, you'll be better able to succeed in that versus somebody who may not have that strength. For example, a plant with really large leaves to capture lots of sun will do better in a place that has less sun than a plant that has really tiny leaves. Plants that have larger leaves usually grow better in shady environments. You have to take into consideration your strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. We're going to learn about these for not only ourselves, but also for plants, and we're going to learn about these to better understand how plants are adapted for certain environments. This SWOT technique is a planning technique used to help a person or an organization, or in our instance, we're going to use the example of a plant, to identify the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats related to business or life to move forward with their strategic plan. This is a SWOT table that you can use for yourself. It's helpful for when designing a career or increasing your productivity in your life, either career or personal. You want to think of the, your strengths, your weaknesses, your opportunities, and your threats. We're going to dive into how we do this for your plant. But before we get started, I want you to understand the basic quadrant. So the positive and negative are on the top, and then the internal, things that you can control, and then the external, things that you can't control, what's going on in the environment. So some positives for a plant would be the adaption of having a large root system or a larger leaf surface area. A negative would be the root system or small leaves. Again, sometimes small leaves are a competitive advantage, but this is just using as an example. External is things that the plant can't control or things that you can't control. The amount of sunlight in that particular area, the temperature, things like that. But as horticulturists, we can affect this external environment. Some threats that plants face are pathogens, and those are things, again, that the plant cannot control. Let's take the time to think about the environment that we prefer. Different plants prefer different environments. For instance, if you took this cactus, which is an extremely drought-tolerant plant, and planted it here, it would die right away. It goes with most of any of these plants taking one plant to another environment. It's not going to succeed. Which of these environments do you prefer? In order for a plant to successfully grow in any of these environments, it's going to have to have different adaptions. For example, if a plant's going to live in a colder area, it's going to have to have tolerance to cold temperatures. If it's growing in a hot area, it's going to have tolerance to those hot temperatures. Plants that are growing in dry areas also have to have resilience to water deficit, or water stress, or drought. Different plants are also adapted to varying light levels. And plants have adaption to growing in certain soils that may be more challenging to grow in. Plants that are cold hardy mean that they're very tolerant to cold temperatures. Plants that are called tender plants are sensitive to cold temperatures. There are a lot of different plant adaptions. Different plants have different classifications based on the adaptions that they have. 
For example, hydrophytes are really good at growing in waterlogged areas. These are a division of aquatic plants adapted to grow in water or very wet soils. Some examples are water lilies, watercress, cattails, and duckweed. Let's take a closer look at cattails' stem structure that allows them to grow in these waterlogged areas. They have a rinkema in their stem structure. Arenchyma are air spaces in the stem and leaf. These small air pockets assist in exchange of gases such as oxygen and carbon dioxide. So these are a cross section of a leaf and a stem. You can see that in this area there's actually holes that act as vents for oxygen and carbon dioxide exchange. These vents shown here and here, called arenchyma, allow these plants to successfully grow in waterlogged areas. When an area is waterlogged, most plants will die because they don't have enough oxygen in their root system. But this arenchyma adaption will allow the plant to basically pump oxygen down into the root system or lower parts of the areas that are waterlogged, so they'll still be able to do important biological processes for life. Xerophytes, on the other hand, can deal with having very little water. I remember it as zero water. Of course they can't live with zero water, but they can handle very drought stress conditions. Some examples are cactus, aloe vera, joshua tree, sedum, many different succulent plants, and yucca. The name succulents is actually an adaption that these drought tolerant plants sometimes have. It's a water saving adaption. It's seen as a thick, fleshy water storing leaves, roots, and stems. As you can see, on succulent plants, the leaves are thicker than normal leaves. Or in this barrel cactus, the stem is succulents, storing water. Or you can see in this picture, the root system actually has succulents, this water-saving adaption. The roots are actually swollen with water, so the plant can store water and use it when times get tough, when there's not very much rain. Halophytes, on the other hand, are very salt-tolerant. Plants which are adapted to soils with high levels of salt are called halophytes. Some examples are beets, spinach, saltbrush, seagrass, and goosefoot family. These are the types of plants you'll see growing near the ocean or areas that have high salt in the soil. When there's a lot of salt in the soil, it's very hard for the plant to deal with because it emulates drought stress conditions. When there's lots of salt in the soil, that salt wants to hold on to the water that is in the soil. So the plant has a very hard time to uptake that water. Think of it as when you eat really salty food. Have you ever noticed that after you eat really salty food, you're very thirsty? When you eat a lot of salt, your body needs a lot of water to offset that salt. So if there's a lot of salt in the soil, the soil wants a lot of water. The plant wants that water also, so they have to have adaptions to get that water from the soil, even though it's really challenging. The last type of plants we'll cover is mesophytes. These plants are adapted to habitats with adequate water. These are plants that usually do quite well in our gardens because we spoil those plants. So let's review. We learned what mesophytes are. They're adapted to habitats with adequate water. We learned what xerophytes are. They're adapted to dry habitats, such as cacti. Halophytes are adapted to salty habitats. And hydrophytes are adapted to freshwater habitats. Take the time to match these different plants with the environment that they'll thrive in. Different plants that thrive in these different environments have to have different strengths and adaptions, such as the arenchyma that hydrophytes have, and they may have weaknesses that allow them to thrive in certain environments, but die in other environments. For instance, a weakness of a cacti plant is that they're not tolerant to excess water. Some external opportunities that cactus plants take advantage of is lots of sun and lots of heat. And some threats that they have is if there is a flood, they will not do well. So take the time to fill out this chart for each of the different types of plants. You'll begin thinking about what adaption those plants have, what weaknesses they might have, and the opportunities that they take advantage and the threats that they have. Practicing using the SWOT chart is very helpful for understanding how plants are adapted for a certain environment, but also learning how you can use the SWOT chart for planning in your own life. 
Your assignment for this section of the class is to choose a plant that interests you. You're going to then fill out this SWOT chart, the strengths and adaptions that that plant has that you're interested in, the weaknesses, the opportunities or available resources it takes advantage of, and the pests and bad conditions such challenges that plant has. This will require you to do research on where the plant that you're choosing to do lives, what the habitat is, the adaptions it has, what it is poorly adapted to, and what pest and disease it can get. You'll also want to include the use of the plant and why you chose it. Why do you find this plant interesting to research? You'll want to summarize your findings in a PowerPoint slide and include a picture of the plant and the citations where you learned about the different adaptions it has. This is your assignment. You'll want to put this SWOT chart together and then take a video of yourself explaining how. You'll then want to take a video of yourself explaining the SWOT chart for your plant and why you find this plant interesting. The video of you explaining your SWOT chart does not need to be long, but again should include a picture of your plant, your name, and your citations of how you learned about that plant. I'm excited to learn from you about the plant that you chose, and excited to learn why you chose that plant, why it interests you. I hope that today better equips you to fill in the SWOT chart. Feel free to email me with comments or questions. Today we covered plant adaptions, and we learned about how different plants have different adaptions that help them thrive in harsh environments. We also learned about the SWOT analysis, a planning technique to help you in your career or your business succeed. We used it for a horticultural use to understand what adaptions plants have and how they thrive in various environments. There's a lot of plant adaptions to learn. We just covered a few today. Continue to learn about these adaptions and you'll be better equipped to understand what plants will grow well in your area. You'll also understand how extreme environments can be a place for plants to thrive, but adaptions are necessary. Continuing to learn more about adaptions will make you a more successful, productive horticulturist. Have a great day.